Hello, welcome to the course on polymers. Uh, what you would have noticed uh, over the weeks that we have been trying to discuss uh, various uh, concepts and uh, properties related to polymers that in the last uh, couple of weeks, we have started uh, looking more uh, from applications point of view. Uh, having covered the ground in terms of uh, the concepts and properties, uh, we have now uh, focused little more on applications and see how some of the concepts that we have learned are actually very useful in terms of analyzing the applications of these polymers. So along the same lines, we'll continue where we will look at uh, applications of polymers in packaging. And uh, what we will see is uh, a lot of uh, things that we discuss in this particular week will be related to interaction of polymers with uh, other materials. And uh, packaging, of course, is a case where a polymeric material is trying to protect something on one side, it could be food or it could be another component which should not be broken from the external environment, which could be in terms of oxygen or UV radiation, it could be in terms of mechanical load. Uh, and, and so, therefore, uh, packaging is like a separation media between what has to be protected from the external environment. And so, interaction of polymers both to the inside as well as outside is extremely important. And so, the focus will remain on uses and uh, we will uh, look at uh, what are different packaging applications in which polymers are used, uh, especially the barrier films, uh, which prevent small molecules going back and forth across this uh, polymer packaging. And uh, in this, we will also have to discuss polymer being permeable to various species and what is meant by permeability of a polymer. So, example of applications uh, which relate to packaging are multiple. In fact, packaging sector probably accounts for 40 percent of overall polymeric materials used. So, it is a very significant amount of polymers which get used in terms of packaging. And if you look at polyethylene and uh, polypropylene, PET and polystyrene, basically 95 percent are these four polymers. So, these four polymers pretty much dominate the packaging applications of polymers. And you should not be surprised because you are all very familiar with these polymers regardless of uh, our technical education, uh, because these are something which we hear in common parlance. And uh, the applications which can be there, we can think in terms of a barrier film, which is for protection and storage of uh, goods and uh, items. Uh, it could be impact resistance packaging, which isolates the mechanical loading which comes from external environment and protects the item which is being stored or the material which is being stored. And so, for example, in transport, this would be very crucial. There can be secondary packaging, uh, which uh, may not have a role in terms of either uh, protection or in terms of impact uh, resistance, but it may be related to aesthetic appeal or it could be related to the fact that uh, you need uh, information to be carried and the component itself, you cannot carry the information. So, the package is what ca carries the information. So, printability and so on. Also, in components, uh, like in case of electronics, uh, you need uh, some of these uh, uh, polymeric uh, materials for uh, sometimes providing electrical connections or sometimes isolation of device from one another in terms of insulation. It can also play a very important role in terms of heat conduction or heat insulation depending on what the application is. So, packaging when we say the it encompasses all of these and in case of electronic it is called packaging because several devices are being packaged in an integrated circuit and in a chip. So, therefore, it is again referred to as a packaging material. And uh, given the amount of uh, use that we have in terms of polymers in these packaging applications and given that there are few uh, materials which are predominantly used, lot of sustainability issues have to uh, be related to these applications. And so, recycling of packaging is a very challenging task. Also because packaging come sometimes very thin film forms packaging comes as multi-phase materials. And so, generally, uh, there is lot of emphasis in terms of replacing packaging by renewable uh, and sustainable or biodegradable polymers. 
So for example, cellulose and starch based materials, chitin and chitosin based materials, casein and gluten based uh, films. So all of these people are working on and trying to see if we can replace uh, many of the packaging applications including biodegradable polymers such as uh, uh, hydroxybutyrate and lactic acid based polymers. So, so a lot of uh, work is going on to try to get biopolymers and uh, uh, degradable polymers as well as uh, compostable and renewable polymers in terms of their usage in packaging applications. So, bulk of sustainable polymer activity is towards this single application related to packaging. Now, the important phenomena uh, which uh, happen during let us say barrier film. So, we will look at one example of barrier film though polymers are used in several packaging application. In case of barrier as the name suggests the small molecules are prevented from going one way or the other. Sometimes it may be selective barrier. So, in the sense that it allows uh, uh, oxygen to permeate but stops carbon dioxide or it may allow moisture to go but stop carbon dioxide and uh, oxygen or it may stop water but allow oxygen to go through. So, depending on the application we may have several uh, such possibilities. In some cases it may prevent any of the small molecules from going so that uh, we protect the, uh, the uh, material from getting exposed to any of the other smaller molecules. So, generally the phenomena which happen is uh, first related to the diffusion given that the material has a certain concentration of these small molecules and outside has certain other concentrations. So, if we think in terms of food item, we may not want the food item to get dried. So, in that case we do not want water to go from food to the surrounding. The reverse also can be there that we do not want the food to get wet or hygroscopic materials which absorb moisture, we do not want them to start absorbing moisture. So, therefore, we do not want water to go from outside to inside. So, therefore, barrier is uh, role of barrier is to manipulate the flux of molecules which go through this barrier film with through diffusion and diffusion is basically flux of molecules due to a concentration gradient. It is based on the chemical potential gradient and chemical potential is defined in terms of change in Gibbs free energy per unit mole. And so diffusion happens whenever there is a concentration difference of these small molecules and barrier film prevents diffusion. You could also have uh, absorption. So, for example, barrier film is exposed to vapor phase or barrier film is exposed to a liquid phase. Then first the molecule has to transfer from the liquid or air phase to the polymer and that phenomenon is called absorption or also called sorption at times or what we also have is solubilization. So, a small molecule, let us say water from the atmosphere is getting solubilized into a polymer. And so, this is basically phase transfer from gas liquid to polymer. This also has to happen before diffusion can happen within the polymer phase. The reverse of this is also possible uh, which is uh, called leaching especially in the context of liquid where migration from polymer phase to the liquid phase. So, small molecules which are there in the polymer can go over to the other phase. And this is something again uh, worrisome let us say from the point of view of packaging in food application. So, if the polymer packaging contains a plasticizer or a catalyst or uh, an additive which can be harmful in terms of its ingestion, then we have to ensure that this small molecule does not interact with the food item and get food item does not absorb it from polymer or it leaches out from the polymer. And so, uh, overall what we are interested in is permeation phenomenon. Permeation in a uh, uh, English language sense just says that something being permeated, permeated from one side to the other, permitted to go from one side to the other. And uh, but permeation as a phenomenon is uh, defined generally whenever we have flux due to pressure gradient. So, permeability of a material is classically is defined for a porous material. So, if we have uh, uh, let us say sand particles and then there are pores and so what can happen is liquid can permeate through this porous medium. And uh, the way permeation will happen is because uh, we have a pressure gradient and uh, P1 is greater than P2. So, this is called permeation, but we use this general term 
to also talk about any flux which is going from one side of the membrane to the other. So, for example, it could be that uh, there is a pressure difference, then uh, this uh, membrane uh, will permeate or there could also be a concentration difference. So, permeation in general is used in a little more general sense in the context of polymeric membrane. So, but generally uh, uh, from a fundamental point of view, it is the flow and convection which implies permeation. And uh, generally permeation is accompanied in case of polymer case because polymer can have pores in which case this uh, analogy with sand uh, is very similar. But let us say if polymers does not have pore and there is a pressure gradient like this, then what has to happen is uh, let us say carbon dioxide or oxygen which is here in large quantities first has to absorb, first has to solubilize in the polymer medium, then it has to diffuse and then finally desorb or come out of the polymer phase. So, permeation in case of polymers depending on what is the type of polymer may involve flow through pores like in case of sand or it may involve what is called a solution diffusion mechanism as in case of a solid polymeric membrane. Additionally, we can have surfaces being involved. So, adsorption of small molecules on polymer surfaces so, that also can happen. So, a packaging film uh, can uh, if it is a packaging film, uh, it can accumulate uh, either dust particles or uh, let us say larger amount of uh, water molecules on the surface and uh, this can influence its packaging performance. For example, uh, we see that uh, if, if water uh, has accumulated more on the surface, it may lead to a biofilm formation, a mold formation or a growth uh, can start happening. So, therefore, adsorption itself can also be a very critical phenomenon which determines the overall response of packaging applications of barrier films. So, these are you can see that there are so many features associated with how small molecules interact with polymeric systems. And uh, general properties of interest uh, based on all these discussions are twofold. One is in terms of the thermodynamic uh, property where we are looking at interactions between small molecules and macromolecules. And basically equilibrium, the distribution of small molecules in polymer phase with respect to either the liquid or the air phase which it is exposed to. So, therefore, in these cases things like solubility, how soluble is a molecule in polymer phase, how soluble is the same molecule in the liquid phase which is surrounding and so on. And in case of surfaces, what is the equilibrium adsorption concentration? So, there are uh, these phenomena which are related to phase equilibrium between polymer phase and other phases. In case of uh, a barrier film uh, where which is let us say multiple polymers, this uh, phase equilibrium will be between multiple polymer phases also. And the other side of the uh, uh, properties which we are interested are related to transport or flux of these molecules and in that case uh, properties like permeability, diffusion coefficient are what are of relevance. So, generally performance of barrier films is assessed based on the solubility and uh, phase equilibria properties as well as permeability and diffusion coefficient and transport properties. And generally uh, all of this uh, we will discuss in more detail. Uh, for example, for separation membranes, we will take a look at what are the mechanisms. The phenomenon of diffusion as well as phenomenon of swelling, we will also discuss in uh, lectures later on. So, let us uh, focus on permeation because that is central to how small molecules move uh, across. So, we can have uh, let us say reverse osmosis in which case we want to selectively remove uh, particles and again permeation is involved. Uh, we can have a barrier film which prevents motion of small molecules. So, in all of these cases permeation is an important property that has to be measured. And so, when a polymeric material is exposed to gas or liquid medium, it allows basically these substances small molecules to go across each other. And in case of let us say biological system, we may be also interested in allowing pro some proteins to go through and so even macromolecules to go through. Uh, in case of a uh, 
separation involving colloidal particles, sometimes we may allow colloidal particles to go through or filter out the colloidal particles. So, many of these things uh, substances could be small molecules, macromolecules or particles also. And generally when we talk of a permeation rate, what we are interested in is the amount of this substance which is going through per unit area per unit time. So, that is a measure of how much is being allowed to go through the membrane which is a either a separation membrane or a barrier membrane. And generally uh, for gases we try to es um, express this permeation rate in terms of volume of gas which is going through per unit area of the membrane and per unit time. And uh, based on the historical uh, usage and based on uh, uh, earlier uh, uh, industrial applications, uh, one way uh, in which uh, this is expressed is uh, based on uh, the uh, volume and uh, it is these are CGS units, but this is what uh, is used quite commonly uh, in terms of a unit called barrer. And uh, what we are trying to do in each of these case is to say that there is a flux of uh, polymeric uh, material allowing I substance to go through it and uh, the flux depends on the permeability of polymer to species I. So, that is why we have two subscripts describing permeability polymer and the substance which is permeating. And uh, this depends on uh, the pressure difference across the polymeric membrane and the thickness of the polymeric membrane. And uh, quite often we are also interested in selectivity, especially so in case of separations, where we want to separate out one component preferentially, but not separate the other. So, in that case we are interested in knowing the ratio of permeabilities of the same polymer to two different species, I and J in this case. So, generally uh, when we look at uh, permeation rate, uh, one of the important uh, substance which has to be prevented from going from one side to the other is oxygen, because oxidation of uh, uh, materials has to be prevented and that is one of the role that packaging can do. And so, this is measured in terms of let us say oxygen transmission rate. Similarly, carbon dioxide transmission rate or water vapor transmission rates are also measured. And uh, uh, the, this uh, slide shows some of the example data for common polymers. What you can see is uh, polyethylene is not very good in terms of oxygen transmission. So, it allows a fair amount of oxygen to go through, but water uh, is, is very small for both uh, polyethylenes. On the other hand, polyvinyl alcohol which is a water soluble polymer in fact, allows lot of water to go through, but it is excellent in terms of stopping oxygen. In fact, polyvinyl alcohol is a very common example in many of the separation membranes, because it is also can be processed in variety of microstructures in a film form which is easy to handle. So, we can, uh, these are industrial tests which measure in, uh, you can see the uh, units on these. So, these are again trade tests and that is why they have a specific name called OTR, COTR and any packaging polymer which is sold where a company is trying to advertise very suitable materials for to be made into packaging, they will try to include these parameters in their trade sheets. So, you can look at uh, some uh, uh, commercial websites and try to find uh, OTR and COTR for some of the materials which they are trying to sell through their data sheets. Uh, on the other hand, we can also express uh, the uh, permeation from a fundamental point of view as we defined uh, in the last slide. And uh, again what you can see is oxygen permeability is very high in case of ethyl polyethylene, but very low in case of polyvinyl alcohol. Reverse is true as far as water is concerned that uh, polyethylene has a very low permeability for water, but PVA has very high permeability. And so, uh, one of the questions that we can uh, think about as a way of future uh, futuristic uh, thought process is can these packaging material not do something little more actively in terms of either changing their performance if let us say they are being subjected to lot more water then can they increase their barrier properties or can they allow oxygen to be permeated for some certain amount of time and then they switch over which is based on requirement and such 
applications. And so one of the thoughts uh, with which we can uh, uh, stop this lecture is in terms of thinking about active packaging. And what do I mean by active packaging? Can packaging do little more than just be a passive barrier film? So for example, if uh, the amount of water that is uh, barrier film is exposed to suddenly increases quite a lot, can the barrier properties also increase? Or can a ba active packaging material indicate to us in addition uh, to doing the barrier job, the concentration of what may be some of the substances? Or can it be a barrier for certain amount of time and then non-barrier for certain other amounts of time? So these are some examples uh, of uh, research problems which people are working on where packaging material uh, due to the polymeric materials which are forming it can perform certain other actions in terms of not only doing the barrier film job, but providing us information or smartly changing its behavior depending on the requirement. So you can try thinking about some of these applications and what may be ideas based on your own experience. So with this, we will close this lecture on polymer packaging. Thank you.